Hi, and welcome back to the Mastering Your Mommy Energy section of this course. You are inside of the Mindful Mommy program. Welcome, welcome. So this is the first video in a brand new module, module two, which is all about healing. In the last module, you learned the basis of mindfulness. You practiced how to respond to stress instead of react to it. And you even explored some new practices that can help you balance your four bodies. So during this module, you're gonna continue to do inner work as you find and clear emotional distress that's been affecting your life and your parenting style. As you've already learned thus far, your habits are being run by your subconscious programming. The majority of these programs were developed when you were only 0 to 12 years old, and these programs have deeply been rooted inside of you and growing ever since. That's why today is all about getting in touch with your inner child. So you can make the connections needed to confront these bad habits these generational paradigms that were created in childhood so that we can begin to heal, to heal. Your inner child is still living inside of you. And even if you don't realize it, that layer of you is actually influencing your life in big ways. You've already become aware of this shift in programming during the first module, but in order to create a true transformation, we have to dig a bit deeper than your current thoughts, limiting beliefs, and your triggers. We have to dig deep inside of your memories and the emotional energy that's being stored inside of your body. We are habitual creatures. The basic beliefs and habits that drive our behaviors are formed in childhood, specifically with stress and trauma. And it's also passed down to you intergenerationally. The science behind this is actually pretty interesting and amazing, but scientists can now prove that there is memory encoded in your DNA from at least three generations down your ancestral line, maybe even more. It's not changing your genes itself. Rather, it's changing the way that your gene is expressed. Your behavior patterns were passed down between generations, not only genetically, but through learned behavior. So let's say that a woman has a husband who is emotionally and physically abusive acting very aggressive towards her, yelling, hitting her. Over time, she coped with this anger by complying. She walked around on eggshells as not to trigger him and learned not to speak her mind or express her emotions as a result. She feels hopeless and stuck, but chooses to stay with him nonetheless. When she has a daughter, that daughter naturally learned from her mom and dad that one, anger and aggression are a normal part of life, and two, it is not safe or even necessary to express our true emotions. She learns that it's safer to just go with the flow and comply instead of expressing herself to get her needs met. Well, this little girl grew up and had a daughter, you who is naturally programmed this way. This child may never have experienced emotional or physical abuse herself, but the memories of the trauma of her ancestors is literally directly affecting her life. Now, I wasn't talking about you specifically. This is just an example of how this generational trauma can create bad habits in your life. But beliefs came out in your childhood memories through your parents, but it can also be expressed through your own childhood trauma and stressful experiences. These memories play a huge role in your parenting style and habitual life. And it's also creating the general generational patterns that you're passing on to your kids right now. 
every child has some level of childhood emotional stress that shaped who they become. And these experiences created emotional blocks that are deeply rooted inside of your subconscious mind. Remember that your subconscious mind gets its strongest programming by the time it's 12 years old. And these paradigms stay with us forever, but they're also trained and altered every day through dominant thoughts and emotional beliefs. That is the magic part. We can rewrite these generational habits and break the cycle the same way that we learned them through subconscious reprogramming. And that is why your dedication and commitment to this process is so important. Your success in healing your own generational habits is going to lie with how much you can learn about the process and how consistent you can be at implementing these practices in your daily life, even after this program ends. I am here for you and I believe in you. So let's get started. Before we jump into this week's practice, I want to explore some toxic behavior patterns with you that may or may not be affecting you. A toxic behavior pattern is a repetitive reaction or response that is damaging your relationship with yourself and with others. As we move through this module, you're going to be asked to identify with some of these toxic behaviors as it affects your life. So be sure to take some notes in your journal, especially if any of these resonate with you. This can be one of the most important and hardest lessons to learn when we're creating emotional intelligence. Because it's not easy to step outside of what we know and what we know about ourselves and really identify with these behavior patterns. But I know you can do it. So just smile and knowing that it wasn't your fault and that creating awareness is the first step in overcoming it. Okay, the first behavior pattern I want to share with you is the passive person. A passive person seeks to avoid confrontation. As a result, they rarely speak their mind or get their needs met. This parenting type suffers for a couple of reasons. First, they get walked all over. They are too nice and don't stick up for themselves. They hold the limiting beliefs that it's their sole duty just to serve their family and that their needs aren't important or as important. The second way this type of behavior suffers in life is living this way will lead to a buildup of resentment, ultimately leading to explosions of anger. This is one reason why parents lose their shit. Okay, the next toxic toxic behavior is aggressiveness. People who are aggressive tend to use their physical body and express themselves to the top when they're feeling emotionally overwhelmed. They may hit things, throw things when they get angry. They yell and scream often. People who have aggressive tendencies likely grew up with a violence and aggression in their home as a kid through some family member. They likely had a family who experienced their own set of trauma that limited their emotional expression. They created a limiting belief that aggression is a normal part of life and a normal way to react to stress and that their emotions usually aren't valid enough for expression. And as a result, they just have a hard time dealing with their emotions. Aggression ultimately leads to parents who fly off the handle easily and often. Next, there's the passive aggressive pattern. This is a very common habit for many people because they have aggression but they hate confrontation. Being passive aggressive is when a person feels upset, but they express it passively. For example, they may get really mad, 
but repeatedly say they're not mad or they're fine. But then they show aggression in another way, an indirect way. So instead of being visi- being visibly angry and maybe screaming, they get back at the person in a way that hurts them in a, hurts their assailant passively. So it could be sulking, ignoring, guilt trips, gossiping, blaming. Kids with parents of passive aggressiveness will also exhibit the same behavior. They pout and sulk when they're unhappy. They grow up learning how not to be an assertive communicator or confront their anger in a healthy way. The next toxic behavior I want to talk about is the controlling person or the controlling parent. There are two types of parental control that are most common, behavior and psychological control. Behavioral control refers to supervising and managing everything about their kid's behavior. The parent feels like they must micromanage every single detail about their child's day. And they lose their patience easily when their control is tested. The psychological control is when parents manipulate their children's feelings, thoughts, or ideas using guilt, love, withdrawal, or showing disappointment. This can happen through showing disapproval or shaming. Parents who exhibit this behavior had parents who were controlling in their life. And they wanted to keep their kids emotionally dependent on them for one reason or another. So they use a lot of fear or a lot of manipulation to gain compliance through threats and other things. A limiting belief for people with control issues is that their kids should be 100% compliant at all times. And if they're not, they're a bad kid. The next behavior pattern I want to talk about that could be affecting your parenting style is aversiveness. A highly aversive parent is likely to respond negatively to certain certain child's behaviors. Things like clinging, resisting direction, crying, whining. Instead of taking the time to be emotionally supportive and patient, they become charged from their child's behavior and emotions in such a way that they respond negatively with their own emotions and behaviors. This behavior pattern usually happens because of an overwhelming sense of stress and emotion in the home. Everything is a big deal. And as a result, hard emotions and conflict are just a regular part of life. Since these parents probably went through their own childhood stress, they too didn't have the opportunity to develop a strong sense of self-awareness and emotional intelligence that could help get them through this. And this usually produces low self-esteem and a low ability to process their emotions productively. They do take the emotions and stress of their child and it stacks up like a cake. Another very common result of trauma in childhood is emotional reactivity or dysregulation. Adults who learn this behavior usually experienced abuse or neglect in the home, or it was passed down generationally. They just have a hard time processing their own emotional stress, and they tend to be very emotionally reactive as a result. People with emotional dysregulation are often described as moody or bitchy. They're always tired and they tend to be in a bad mood. They're exhausted. They tend to use emotional punishments when they're angry with others. And an emotional punishment would be like giving the silent treatment or rejection or withholding affection. They experience their emotions with intense reactions versus the typical or calm reaction. And this can be a wild range of emotions, sadness, anger, irritability, frustration. It's all high stress mode. So these are the core behaviors that cause us to yell and be angry and impatient. This programming, if you have this, will continue to affect you and your child and their children 
if you don't do anything about it. So did you guys connect with any of these behaviors? I shared these specific behaviors because I wanted to help you create self-awareness about why you might be yelling and how you might be processing your anger. Because it's going to help you to locate where they came from and how we're going to heal them, which is the next step in this process. During childhood, we all were affected by our own set of stressful, emotional, and traumatic experiences. And most of these could be the result of some of the toxic behavior patterns that I just discussed. But there are other traumas that affect us. And listen, trauma does not have to be what you think. Yeah, for some, it could be pretty intense, like physical abuse or molestation, a tragic event, or even violence and war. But trauma doesn't have to be that extreme of an experience. It can be any kind of significant event or pattern in your life that triggered a highly emotional response. Events that usually stick out in your memory and shape who you've become. Another example of trauma can be ongoing stress or chronic stress in childhood. This can be an example of this would be, you know, substance abuse or dysfunction in the home, living with alcoholism or drug abuse, for example. As a child, you're always worried about what you're coming home to and you don't feel safe. You're wondering if people are partying or fighting or stealing at your house. This can also come in the form of an ongoing sense of fear and lack of safety. Feeling hurt, ashamed, blamed by siblings, or being bullied, rejected, or subjected to verbal and emotional abuse. Your mental functions are then taken over by the stress and these ex- of these experiences and it, and it inhibits us from learning more important things like how to handle stress and emotion. During Mindful Mommy, we are focusing on your ability to be a calm and loving mother who isn't phased by the stress that breaks us. And so this week is all about getting in touch with your inner child so that you can face some of these traumas head on. And I know you might be thinking, ick, (laughs) does not sound fun. Well, I definitely flinched the first time I went through this process because digging up not so fun childhood memories and stress is nobody's favorite pastime. But become motivated by knowing that you're about to improve your life and break the cycle for good. I want you to enter this week's practice with power instead of fear with an open mind that knows that they're going to be undergoing transformation. It's so easy for us to take the victim mindset. Everything is happening to us and it's out of our control. My mom was an alcoholic, so I'm an alcoholic. Just the way it is. Well, knock that shit off right now because that's not the kind of thinking that serves us or our family. I like to think of it this way. You are given the same crap in your life over and over again until you can learn from it and create change from it to transform the energy into something good. Your trauma can be your biggest superpower if you allow it to. You got this. This program did not find you on accident and today is a beautiful day for transformation. So let's take a deep breath and let's kick this week's ass. All right, let's talk about the process for meeting up with your inner child. I know for me, I suppressed a lot of traumatic memory that I had as a child because they're not good. (laughs) I shoved them way down deep. So I knew that I had to dig deep to find them. So last week, you practiced meditation every day, I hope. Meditation and deep breathing helps us to bring our brain waves into a lower and relaxed state. And when our brain waves slow down and we enter a more dreamlike state of relaxation, we can have closer access to the memories stored in our subconscious mind. 
this is amazing because we can actually get closer to these feelings and these memories that are creating blocks in our life. So that is why this week I'm going to guide you through a short meditation that's going to help encourage you to have an experience with your younger self. And after doing the meditation, I want you to complete the worksheet that I'm going to provide. This is going to help you to record and reflect on this meeting that you're going to have with your inner child so that you can continue your healing process throughout this module. Also, don't forget to complete the journaling assignments this week as there's some pretty powerful stuff in there. And feel free to listen to the meditation every day just before you complete your journaling exercise if you really want to enhance your experience. All right, that's it for this week and I will see you in the next lesson.